I want to turn now to Taiwan, which says Chinese military drills off its coast are far more than just a, a rehearsal for an invasion of the self-governing island, China claims, as part of its territory. Taiwan's foreign minister says the drills reflect China's ambitions to control large parts of the Western Pacific Ocean to stop the U.S. and its allies from helping Taiwan in the event of a Chinese attack. China began a series of missile launches, live fire exercises, air and naval drills after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan last week. Pelosi defended her visit during an interview on the Today Show on Tuesday. This is about democracy in Taiwan. We cannot allow the Chinese government to isolate Taiwan. They may say to them, you can't go to the World Health Organization, but they're not going to say who can go to Taiwan. And yes, it was worth it. And what the Chinese are doing is what they usually do. With us now to talk more about this is B. Kim Shao, Taiwan's representative to the United States. Representative, I thank you so much for being with us this morning. I just want to start by asking, how are people in Taiwan holding up as China continues to ramp up its pressure, both diplomatically, militarily, and even cyber-wise? Yes, well, the people of Taiwan are trying to carry on uh, with their lives. Um, we have uh, been seeing such threats uh, from China for decades. Um, this is not new to us, although the intensity of the recent exercises are truly alarming. Uh, but we are not letting that affect the way we live our lives and our desire uh, to breathe the air of freedom. And indeed, that is such a, a difference, a stark difference between how people in Taiwan live their lives, fulfill and follow their dreams, and then what the people in mainland China have to deal with, a repressive government that gives no opportunity for political freedoms. China, meanwhile, Representative, you know, this released a white paper today mm -hmm. accusing Taiwan's ruling party of damaging the chances of peaceful unification and not ruling out the use of force to unify the two sides. What do you make of this? Well, you know, their current strategy is to use intimidation and coercion uh, to force us to accept China's political terms. And those terms, as they have laid out in this white paper, uh, is a formula that they have been using with Hong Kong, and that is the one country, two systems formula. And uh, unfortunately, we have seen the tragic backslide of basic rights in Hong Kong, the deprivation of the freedom of speech, the freedom of association, and the freedom of press. And that is not what the people of Taiwan want. Uh, we will not intimidate it or coerced uh, into sacrificing the hard-earned democratic rights that we have fought so hard to achieve. The problem, Representative, is, and you know this better than most, I mean, China has a vast military apparatus, and they are certainly willing to use it, not only domestically, as they have since the 1st of October of 1949 against its own people, but to strike out at, at uh, other places. And so how do you, Representative, uh, deal with or, or help guarantee that the people of Taiwan can continue living in democracy when you have this threat that is so close and so real? Well, we have also been working to fortify our defenses. Um, we do not intend to engage in an arms race uh, with China. Our ultimate goal is to deter. And so we have worked on an asymmetrical defense uh, strategy where we fortify our capabilities to deter the Chinese from actually utilizing military force to achieve uh, their political ends. In the meantime, uh, strengthening our public immunity uh, to such uh, tools of intimidation, which include not only uh, military threats, but also economic coercion, cyber attacks, uh, political influence campaigns in our society. Um, China has a broad toolkit, and we also have to respond uh, in a diversified way. Uh, but what's also important to assert is that we need friends internationally. We need friends to stand with Taiwan at this very critical time. Uh, we need friends to assert with us that the use of force
course, is disrupted, not disruptive not only uh, to Taiwan and peace in the Taiwan Strait, but it is disruptive to the world, and the world will not tolerate the use of force to resolve political disputes. And, Representative, I mean, as far as speaking about friends of Taiwan and support to Taiwan, you're standing right in front of the Capitol. There is bipartisan support for the people of Taiwan on Capitol Hill and throughout our country. One of those, Senator Bob Menendez, as you know, chairman of foreign relations in the Senate, he's pushing a bipartisan bill that would bolster U.S. defense assistance, deepen U.S. ties with Taiwan, and help Taiwan become a larger player on the world stage. The White House seems to be pushing back a bit against that bill, saying it would or could upset the balance with China. What would that bill mean for Taiwan? Well, Taiwan appreciates the bipartisan support uh, from Congress uh, that, again, has been there for decades. And I think China's uh, belligerent behavior and provocative actions uh, have prompted even greater attention uh, to addressing um, and to working with Taiwan in responding uh, to such threats. Um, so uh, we are, are, are grateful uh, for a number of legislative initiatives uh, in Congress and uh, hope that uh, we will, uh, pr that these uh, initiatives will also provide effective tools uh, for us to work together to counter uh, such aggression and to preserve the peace that is in the interest of all of us. Representative V. Kim Shao, I thank you so much for being uh, with us this morning. I invite you to come back and continue our conversation going forward. I thank you for your time.